Hello everybody, this is Scott Framiller here on The Mental Knot. Today we're going to talk about addiction and I have two um, really special guests. The first is Sarah and then um, we also have Tiffany and Tiffany is, you wanted me to say an, an SC, what, what, psychotherapist, but what's the? LMSW. LMSW, yeah. super cool. And then Sarah, you are three years sober, you three said? Three and a half. Three and a half Almost years four, sober. yeah. Yeah. Getting so. close. So before we got going here, we were talking about um, how everybody has an addiction, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Everybody's addicted to something. Yeah. And you said... Everyone is addicted, in my opinion, to victim mindset, trauma, and drama. And it's what keeps people in the cycle. It gets people stuck, so they are not able to move forward. Staying in that, mm -hmm. that cycle. Mm -hmm. And how does that relate to, say, like alcoholism or drugs or... So it's kind of like you might have a desire to stop a substance, but the pattern that goes along with it, um, it could be getting up, going to the store, um, buying the substance, going back to wherever you're staying. And you get in that mindset of, hey, this is my life, right? Um, it's like a poor me, poor me mentality. Um, and we just get stuck there and we feel like life is happening to us and it takes something either drastic most of the time or for someone to come into our lives and just be like, hey, what are you doing? And we call it the gift of desperation. Something has to happen where you're just kind of like jolted and you either end up seeking out help or you're just like, I can't do this anymore. And there's like this internal shift and it can be a really, really scary thing because we always use that term like we're waiting for the other shoe to drop. And it's like, if I am on the road and things are going well, it's kind of like I'm still waiting for something negative to happen. So we're constantly cycling backwards and we're afraid to experience happiness because what if it goes away? Is it sustainable? And it's true. So you, like, bef I guess, and what do you say, like pre-addiction or like what, how did you identify that you had a problem? What happened? I mean, I've always, I've thought about this a lot over the past, you know, three and a half, four years. I don't really know when it shifted for me from something that was social and that you were just doing it to have fun to something that I was so dependent on that I couldn't be awake in the morning and I, I was shaking so bad until I had the alcohol and it was, I, I just, I don't know when it shifted. But you're so right when you say that like something really inside of you internally has to kick in for you mm -hmm. to want to stop. Mm -hmm. Because I've talked to many people over the years who want to quit, want to quit, want to quit. But I, I always tell them, you have to want it for you. Mm -hmm. Not for somebody else, not for, you know, to appease your family or anything. You have to want it for you. And that's exactly what happened to me. We have a couple rules, um, you know, since doing the show and talking with, you know, people like yourselves you can't help somebody unless they ask. Mm -hmm. Like you can't just offer it up and be like, oh, I'm going to help you and make things better. You can't do that all the time until too. they ask you <laughs> so for help, hard. right? Mm -hmm. Like that's so critical because something has to change within. Mm -hmm. It's all within us, but you have to make that decision to change. Absolutely. Um, and we see it, it all the time too. Yeah. Like people will come in and it's almost like a, I don't know if it's like a sixth sense, but there are people who come in who are like, hey, like I want to make this change. It's going to be hard, but I'm down for the ride. Mm -hmm. And then there's people who are there because they have to be there. And they are literally just going through the motions. Right. Um, and, you know, as a therapist, it's not my job to make someone's better. It is my job to help empower people. Give them the tools mm -hmm. to do the work. I can't right. want it more than they want it themselves. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. You know, we talk about um, red flags all the time, mm -hmm. you know, from addiction or, you know, you might have a traumatic event or whatever. And then mm -hmm. you start you start managing that event with mm -hmm. alcohol or drugs or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes a habit to manage it. Right. Or manage just life in general mm -hmm. or manage that negative mindset, that mm -hmm. victim mindset. Right. Because right? there's yeah. you know, we, we said um, mm -hmm. Shelly just walked in and um, one of the things we talk about a lot on the show is like it's easier to form a foundation around hate than it is around mm -hmm. love, mm -hmm. right? And then it goes back to that same point that you just made. But that foundation around hate promotes that addiction. It mm -hmm. promotes the it alcohol and the drug use and that, mm -hmm. you know, that super, mm -hmm. I won't say super unhealthy, but mm -hmm. that 
process, I guess it would say. For sure. One of the biggest things that I tell everyone I, I talk to and I work with, there are four basic human needs. And those needs are to be seen for who we actually are, heard, like understood, um, valued, and desired. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we spend time seeking that outside of ourselves and it's like setting us up for failure because if we're not able to do that for ourselves, how can we expect mm -hmm. anybody to do it for ourselves, for us? And we have to become really adept at learning that skill set, and that is what self-love is. That's where self-worth is derived. And when we don't feel those things, that's a lot of times where addiction comes into play, and it fuels addiction as well. Hmm. Yeah, because you can't give love if you if you don't yeah. have it, mm -hmm. right? You can't. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. You can't. Yeah, like think about you can't like, have respect unless you have respect for yourself and all right, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Right. Think about like your healthiest relationships, right? Why do they feel good? Why are they healthy? Think about it. Well, there's not because you're happy with you. You're happy first with you, and foremost. Right. Yeah. Right. So so, um, you know, people go on sabbaticals or whatever, mm -hmm. right? And one of the things I realized is that. Once you're alone for a certain period of time and you're totally by yourself, mm -hmm. you are that person. Like there's no, nobody can tell you who you are. Nobody can mm -hmm. say, oh, you're an a-hole or oh, right. you're drama or oh, right. you're angry. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you start to wake up and I'll use myself as an example. Mm -hmm. So I did 33 days on the road, right, mm -hmm. my motorhome. And I, I woke up and I'm like, oh, wow, I actually love people. I'm happy. I'm adventurous. Um, I'm social. Mm -hmm. I'm not, there's no drama. There's no drama mm -hmm. at all. Um, there was like no anger. I didn't get right. pissed off. So nobody can take that from you. Right. Right. And I think that's part of the rehab process right. is like taking yourself out of life and reestablishing like who you really are. Is that yeah. a good way to explain it? And also vulnerability. Mm -hmm. I mean, until you're like 100% satisfied with yourself, you're not going to be vulnerable with anybody else, which mm -hmm. leads to, you know, all of those other feelings that are attached to right. it. So. Right. Well, I think getting on a show like this makes you vulnerable. Oh, yeah. Like you have to have some guts to mm -hmm. do that mm -hmm. in itself, right? Because you're super vulnerable for all kinds of things like ridicule or... For sure. You right. know a secret? Yeah. I'm camera shy. Are you really? I am. I don't even know where yeah, the cameras are, so we're good. Yeah. <laughs> isn't it? Isn't it? It's, it's, it's trippy, though. Like you said, when you're around positive, good people, then a lot of that stuff goes away. Like, you don't have anything to fear or right. the anxiety, right? Because right. you're supported. Right. You know nobody's, like, going to... And it's more of just a conversation. Yeah. It's more of just a conversation. Yeah. Um, someone at work recently asked me to like be on like a TikTok video and to like do some stuff for the website. And it, I was like, okay, hold on a minute. I wrote out an entire outline of what I was going to go over. Organized. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then like my colleague was just like, what are you doing? He's like, you suck when you read it like this. He was like, just have a conversation. Just I was do like, it. I was like, oh, okay. That's why okay. we don't. Um, ever script anything, uh -huh. Shelly and I, we just go. Right. Right. I say stupid shit and she says smart shit and it works <laughs> out really well. But um, I did want to get back to you. So, so tell me about like some green flags. You, we always, we always, like I said, we talk about red flags, like, yeah. oh, this is something you need help. But like, when did you know you were recovering? When did you know your brain was starting to become healthy? What is it? Tell me what it looked like and how you got there. Oh, wow. Um, well, I'm going to start in the red flag area, okay. I guess. Um, I per made the personal choice for myself that I wanted to quit drinking. I just, I had to, I mean, I'd spent a lot of time in jail and that wasn't my rock bottom. And I just, I was so dependent on this one substance just to function. And I knew, I knew at that point I had that shift. Mm -hmm. I don't want this anymore. I know that, you know, I'm going to be healthy. Well, I didn't realize that quitting alcohol cold turkey when you're that far into it will really just mm -hmm. shut your organs mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I quit drinking on the 25th of October. And about th three days after that, I just started, I didn't feel right. I felt, I felt like I was dying. That's the mm -hmm. best way to explain it. And so I went to the hospital. Sure enough, I was in ICU for four days. They intubated me. They, I, my body was shutting down. I was dying. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even know it. They told me if I had waited any more than 24 hours, I, I wouldn't be alive. That's real. Yeah, that's real. I lost four days of my life. And the, the moment that I woke up in the ICU and I'm like, what's happening? I'm trying to pull everything out. And they're like, no, no, no. You know, I mean, that's when I knew that 
this is it. I don't, I don't ever want to drink again. There's no turning back. Like I just, there was something in me that knew I had the near death experience. I know a lot of people are skeptical about it, but I was going to my grandmother and she was on a, 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 it was a lake house and it was very warm, bright colors, very just, I was at peace. I wasn't upset or anything, Mm -hmm. but it wasn't my time. And I was trying to get to her and I couldn't get to her. And that's why, but you know, it's your subconscious because I'm out of it. I'm in the ICU. I, I don't know what's happening. But What was blocking you from getting to her? I don't think it was my time. Okay. I think she was telling me, no, you're not, you're not ready. You're going to beat this. Yeah. 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 I don't know why I didn't go, but there's a purpose that I'm here. There's a reason that I'm still alive. There's a reason that I made it through mm-hmm. ICU. I mean, I was still in recovery in the hospital for about two and a half weeks after that. Wow. So it was... In the, that time there that you have a lot of self-reflection, you're by yourself, you know, you're figuring out that all your organs were shutting down because of this one thing that mm-hmm. you just became so reliant on. And for me, it was just, it was a no-brainer at that point because I had already committed to wanting to quit. Mm-hmm. And after realizing that mm-hmm. I could have died, I, I mean, there's just, I, I won't ever go back. Yeah. What, what were you no. trying to get away from? Like, what were you using the alcohol to manage? I I don't think that I was happy with me. I hadn't found that inner happiness. I mm. wasn't satisfied with myself. I thought that alcohol made me a better version of myself. Mm. Alcohol made me more fun, more appealing. People wanted to be around me when I was drinking. It made me have more confidence. I was I felt happier. I mean, I started I'm from a very small town and, you know, what do you do in small towns? You go out to the middle of nowhere and you drink. And so it started at a very young age and it was just kind of an acceptance type thing. Mm -hmm. And you just get stuck in that thinking that when you're drinking, you're better around people, more people like you, you're happier. But in all reality, it's a depressant. So at the end of it, at Mm -hmm. the end of that little high that you have, you're worse off and (laughs) and you're not happy. (laughs) And I think that's where, like in my experience at least, like, when we talk about not seeing, hearing, valuing, and desiring Mm -hmm. ourselves, it's then when we're just like, I'm acting, whether it's on impulse or I'm acting because I need to act to be accepted, Mm -hmm. we are not actually paying attention to ourselves. And we end up, like our self-worth is now dependent on the value that everyone Mm -hmm. else places on us. Yeah, Yeah, well, when I say, you know, everybody is an addict. I mm-hmm. think everybody is an addict with something like you said with drama and stuff. And, you know, I, I drank every day mm-hmm. for sure mm-hmm. um, for a long time. Mm-hmm. And I did it to manage a relationship now that mm-hmm. I look back, you know, mm-hmm. um, but not from a victim standpoint, but from what you were saying. And then, and then it became like a habit mm-hmm. to maintain, to not actually be present and realize your reality because mm-hmm. I was lying to myself, right? Like I was full of shit. Right. But, you know, we talked about judgment a mm-hmm. little bit earlier mm-hmm. and people are like, oh, you're in recovery or, oh, you did this. Well, every one of us is probably like just a little tiny step away from that, right? Probably. And it's some of it's luck mm-hmm. um, or some of it's like being truthful, like, yeah. you know, what you did, you quit drinking and you're like, holy shit, I'm going to die. I'm going to be in ICU. But that's really the reality of it, right? Like that's the thing that we need to eliminate is the judgment. And we talked a little bit about mm-hmm. that this morning with Robin, and she jokes around a lot about stuff, but mm-hmm. our society is really, truly based on that. Mm, for sure. And that's one of the things that we should try to mitigate more mm-hmm. and understand and ask the why, not mm-hmm. just like label somebody as an addict. Yeah, and we right. even said that right. when you came mm-hmm. in, Sarah, like, what do we call you? Oh, yeah. recovering alcoholic. But, but then we didn't want to do that because it's like a negative connotation, yeah, right? I mean, like, why would we throw that out there? But society makes that a negative connotation. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, you know, I look at it and I'm, I don't want my alcoholism excuse me, my alcoholism to define me right. because I'm more than that. That's mm-hmm. a piece of me that I'm, you know, I've learned to accept and I embrace and I know that moving forward in my life, like that's, that's, that's what keeps me sober, but it also doesn't make me who I am. Right. I'm right. not just an alcoholic. Mm-hmm. I am not, you know, a recovering alcoholic. You're Sarah. I'm Sarah. Yeah. Well, I'm a badass. Yeah. yeah. You're a badass girl. Yeah. <laughs> You're Sarah McPhee, the badass. Yeah. yeah. So, um, we go back we go back to you're in the ICU yeah you know you decide subconsciously it seems like that you're it's not your time like you're not going to quit yeah and then you get out of ICU and then what i mean you lots of self discovering so i i know a lot of people 
that have done AA, and I absolutely 100% support those people. For me, I didn't go that route because I, in my mind, and this is just me, I looked at AA as something else I would be dependent on. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to have to go from one dependency to another dependency to stay sober. So I did it by myself, which there's no rule book or guidebook or any direction. So you just kind of rediscover yourself. It was a lot of losing friends. You don't, I don't have a social life. I don't go out. I don't do that. But I had to remove myself from those specific situations because I didn't want to be triggered or didn't want to mm -hmm. maybe feel like there was a potential slip for me to want to start drinking again. Even though in my mind I knew I was strong enough to not want it anymore, there's always those small factors. Mm -hmm. And it sometimes there's a lot of a lot. isolation, being by yourself yeah. and rediscovering. Yeah. And That's just, hard, huh? Yeah. And you're just... I mean, I'm still Did a work you cry in progress. A lot? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I still cry. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I cry. I a have lot. moments where I'm like, <laughs> oh, who am I? Yeah. Who yeah. really yeah. am I? But I I mean, I feel like I've come so far and I still have so far to go. But I appreciate who I am now and what I have to offer. Right. And I know that I bring something to the table. And I know that I'm strong. And I know that there's maybe potentially down the road, there's gonna be times where alcohol may be present or I might think about it. I mean, my dad passed away two years ago and a lot of people would, oh my gosh, I need to have a drink. My brother, mm -hmm. that's exactly what he did. Just, you know, right. drank away his it day. A bit exactly. Too. And yeah. it, it takes away that pain. But for me, I wanted to feel that as awful and horrible as it is. Like I miss my dad every single day, but I wanted to feel it because without that, then I'm right back to square one where I'm masking everything in my right, life right. with alcohol or drugs or whatever the case is. You got to feel it to heal it. Yeah. You yeah. have to really feel that even if it's a horrible emotion and a horrible feeling, like if you don't feel it, then you don't know how to fix it or embrace it or move forward with it. Mm -hmm. And it's also like, okay. Mm -hmm. And I think that's like where we get like hung up as well. We are, hang on. Okay. <laughs> we you gotta watch out for Robin. <laughs> She'll be honest. Sometimes we are afraid to feel emotions. They can be absolutely terrifying. It sucks. And yeah. it's kind of realizing that like it's temporary. Like the pain is temporary. Mm -hmm. You're going to like it's about learning to ride the wave. The waves are always gonna be there but it's about like learning to surf essentially. Mm -hmm. So it's like feeling mm -hmm. that excruciating pain. Like my sister died two and a half years ago from a heroin and fentanyl overdose. Yes. And the only way to manage that pain was, was to go through it. Mm -hmm. um, and there are times when like we're triggered and like we don't know what else to do other than like might be like curling up in the fetal position and like crying mm -hmm. it out or talking to someone but not necessarily masking it. Yeah. I think right? we've all done that. Yeah. Right? Like if you're real and you're truthful with your feelings and absolutely you do mm -hmm. that, right? Like yeah. that's mm -hmm. part of it. Absolutely. Now I have a question. So, mm -hmm. so if, if you take like alcohol or cocaine or heroin or whatever it is, there's like a physiological addiction mm -hmm. too from your body. Like you said, you almost died. So clearly your body was dependent on alcohol mm -hmm. to function. Um, but there's also like a mental aspect too, like pathways sure. in your brain and receptor yep. sites and all that kind of stuff too. Mm -hmm. So it's not only like, that's part of the addiction though, right? Is it that how it works? It absolutely is. So for me, there's a difference between abstinence when your body is, um, like your, your body is physically sober, but are you emotionally sober? Mm. And we that? have lots of conversations about what is emotional sobriety. And it is about feeling your feelings without getting like stuck in that cycle and riding that wave and surfing it. So it's kind of like, oh, like I am, you know, this thing over here upset me. I'm upset right now. Let me like breathe and like just take a step back from the situation. Mm -hmm. If I need to seek out support, whatever that looks like, maybe I'm like hanging out with my dog or maybe I'm calling my sponsor. Um, and then just saying, oh, okay, like that sucked, right? It's kind of like you're acknowledging that feeling, but realizing kind of playing the tape forward, like I don't need a substance to mask this because I'm going to get through it. It is seeing, hearing, valuing, and desiring yourself. I don't want to like go back and use anything. Um, and, I am and going to be You have to, to train okay. yourself to get out of that circle mm -hmm. of like mm -hmm. being negative and hurt and bummed out oh, yeah. and all that. Like yeah. you have to stop it. Mm -hmm. Like you said, um, I was talking to a guy from the fire department. I haven't talked mm -hmm. to him in 25 years. 
And the habit is, you know, like this death and destruction mindset. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you almost get in your car and you think like, oh my God, I get an accident or my tire yeah. could blow out or my brakes are gonna blow out. And you're like, no, that's, cr that's not reasonable to think that because I drive a vehicle that's been maintained and you know what I mean? And even if that did happen, I'd be okay. Driven right? There. right? Yeah. But, but you change yeah. your thought process. It's almost like you can manifest shit to happen to you if you keep thinking negative thoughts all the mm -hmm. time, right? Like you almost bring that in, like you said, the people around you right. earlier, right? right? Like you bring that shit in. And like Eric, you know, he's done so well mm -hmm. in creating a culture and a mindset, even within our team mm -hmm. and our company mm -hmm. where like people are transparent and they're right. supportive and they mm -hmm. all know and he's not shy about right, right, where he's right. come from and what he's dealt with like yeah. like you aren't mm -hmm. either um and you aren't like we all share stuff like right. we've all had right. trauma um so i think that's powerful and, and interesting like how you have to constant like your brain is so it's a pain in the ass it is and it's like, it's like <laughs> constant maintenance i think it is like that's our what i'm constantly doing too. i'm constantly thinking about how i'm going to deal with this situation mm -hmm. and like you said don't let the pendulum swing so far mm -hmm. right that you're stuck in this you know anger right, or right. sadness or whatever but acknowledge it and f you have to figure out a way to get out of it mm -hmm. right? because right. not only i was on antidepressants when i was in high school so obviously there's some depression issues there but my anxiety always takes over. Mm -hmm. I, and mm -hmm. that's something I'm learning to deal with in my day to day because I'll wake up super anxious about nothing. Right. I've got nothing to do, but yet my mind's going 10 feet ahead of me. Mm -hmm. What if I get in my car today and I drive, you know what I mean? And it's, right. it's, it's maintenance. You have to constantly be thinking about mm -hmm. what you're thinking about. Mm -hmm. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? It's like, like, I think so much of it is about being present and like how do we get to be present and it can be a bunch of different things for different people mm -hmm. like prayer and meditation. meditation and like you can like slow your brain down enough mm -hmm. so and then just add some intentionality behind what it is we're doing so like i know when i wake up in the morning because i i struggle with anxiety mm -hmm. as well i'm just like oh my gosh like what's gonna happen today and it's like before I even get out of bed, like I'm taking a deep breath and I'm like having gratitude for like waking up again. Yeah. Something like super simple. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that we pay enough attention to things like I that. I think that's the difference. That's like the green flag, mm -hmm. right? Like, you know, Meditation. it's a green flag when you wake up and you're like, holy shit, I wonder what's going to happen today. Like, mm -hmm. it's going to be cool. Like, yeah. look at the sun. It's sunny. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and you're excited about what's going to happen and stuff or meeting people or, mm -hmm. you know, even driving to the show today, yeah. right? Like, you get yeah. to see Rock and Robin and meet yeah. you guys. and. Yeah. Like I get excited for it, you know, and, mm -hmm. and um, the dialogue that Shelly and I have, is, yeah. it's always a positive, right. helpful, uplifting thing. Mm -hmm. um, but you're right, like it's constant. And it's funny too, because we think about, you know, physical fitness, right? We mm -hmm. talked about that could be an addiction as well. Mm -hmm. And if we worked on our minds as much as we worked on our bodies, like holy shit, we'd be way better mm -hmm. off, right? Because without mm -hmm. your mind, you have nothing. Like right. you have no, like that can shut down everything, you know, right. Right. your success, your family, your yeah. relationships, everything. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that healthy mind aspect, you know, I work on it all the time. Right. But but I think you can change, like, every day is a new day. And, you know, in your profession, don't mm -hmm. you think you can change? Like, you could be, like, yesterday doesn't define you. Right. I think that it's about repetition. Because so many of us have had, like, disempowering, like, traumatic events happen to us. Mm -hmm. And even if you have not experienced trauma, like... As we're growing up, our subconscious is developing. And oftentimes, like we do, that's when we develop a sense of shame and guilt. And, you know, the world around us, again, is dictating our worth and our value. So we tend to make ourselves small sometimes and we tend to take on like, like external programming and it can become very negative. We are learning to like expect the worst, but hope for the best. Mm -hmm. Well, why can't it be anything else? So we why can't are we just expect the best? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and I think we do that as human beings, whether we're addicts or not. It is about retraining your brain because the subconscious, if you say something, if I say tornado right now, what's the first thing you think of? Like, I don't know, climbing Hide, a hole yeah, and dying. Desk, yeah, yeah. Right. Like, so <laughs> like that's just like danger. Yeah. yeah. Um, but if I say, like, <laughs> run, <laughs> yeah. run, like I might Fall shoot myself. Shelter, I don't, I don't it's going to be bad. Right, right. <laughs> but if I just tell you that there's like these like wonderful palm trees that are, you know, you can see the the leaves and the, the air and 
there's an ocean and there's waves and you can hear the sound. What are you thinking of? Pensacola, walking in the sea, <laughs> flying yeah. my Relaxing. kite. Yeah, yeah. so it's like yeah. your subconscious is then seeking out the positive. So it's about training our subconscious. Mm -hmm. And we do have a choice. Are we going to stay in that mindset where we are like seeking out negative things and like mm -hmm. attracting those things to us? It's not that we're attracting it. That's just what we're familiar to yeah. um, versus are we seeking out more positivity, right? And it's, you know, the silver lining in everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, are we but, are we learning a lesson in everything bad that we've gone through? Yeah. And, you know, self-care. We talk mm -hmm. about self-care. Like, we talked about your hair when you came in. Yeah. You know, and you're proud of that. That's cool. Yeah. Like, it looks good. And, you know Statement. what I mean? You take care of yourself. She has, like, a whole routine. <laughs> yeah, and your fingernails match Eric's shirt. And, like, that's cool shit, right? Like, yeah. that self-care mm -hmm. perspective. And, you know, you dress yeah. nice. You take care of yourself. Yeah. And, like that's important too because it, it makes you feel, feel better. better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Shelly and I talked about that a, a lot too mm -hmm. about that, and right. um, and it's important, right? Yeah. Like Absolutely. do what makes you feel good, not mm -hmm. what you think other people Absolutely. expect. It goes back to that self care, yep. that self esteem, self worth, all that kind of it's stuff. It's so hard though because you have to train yourself because sometimes you're thinking, "Wow, I'm having a great hair day today," and then you instantly are like, "But am I really? Is somebody gonna <laughs> notice? That? You know right. what I mean? Is right. somebody gonna notice his hair is out of place?" But then you have to. Revert back to, no, I feel great. Mm -hmm. I don't right. care. Why do we care about Isn't other it? people like, saying things? Isn't it funny, though? Like, you could dress, like, in, in your sweats and mm -hmm. not have any makeup on, but if you had, like, this, like, dude, everything's cool, mm -hmm. you'd look just as pretty. Like, it wouldn't really yeah, matter. For sure. Like, your energy can portray mm -hmm. how you're perceived Absolutely. more than your looks can. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's that. It's, yeah. It's, Confident. I, uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Or you just that. it and uh -huh. present it. Yeah. People are going to respect you, and they're right. going, wow, she's... Right. And they always it's say that, that that that's addictive. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that personality that you put out yeah. and that energy that you put out is addictive. Yep. People like like that shit. Yeah, you know so why mean? can't that be the new addiction? Right. Right. Yeah. And it's yeah. kind of like living by our values. Like and that's one of the things that like we'll do um in session is like literally list out your values and what do you value for yourself and within yourself and then what do you value in other people? And once you get that on paper you are you begin to live by that mm -hmm. and then like you do get rid of like toxic relationships and people it just kind of all falls away mm -hmm. and then you're just like oh i'm more positive today yeah. Yeah. and it's because it's like you're letting go of the negative and things that are misaligned to like your value system that and your victim mindset right you know? you're also a prodigy of i mean i've been asked you know where do you see yourself in six years mm -hmm. and not five you yeah uh -huh. <laughs> Three years now. <laughs> but it's all about the people you surround yourself mm -hmm. with. So yeah. if you're in, you know, an environment with very toxic people, six years from now, you're probably not going to be anywhere that you mentally want to be because mm -hmm. you're a prodigy of who you mm -hmm. surround yourself right. with. Absolutely. So if you're around people that are taking care of themselves, motivated, moving in the right direction, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. more than likely you're going to be doing those right. same things. Right. So. Right. Absolutely. And just, you know, that judgment piece we just mm -hmm. talked about too, like not talking shit about other people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, let that go. That's not even your deal. You know right. what I'm saying? Or right. excluding people or mm -hmm. whatever. People will fall away. You don't mm -hmm. have to make a decision to right. exclude anybody. You just be you and the right people will stay and the wrong people will fall away. Yep. Right. And so... We're three years sober, not we. You are three years sober, and you got to wake up and have a shitty day here and there. What do you do? Oh, my gosh. Are you kidding me? I work out. That's what I have to do. I work out and I meditate. I'm, I'm very organized in that sense. Like, I, I don't want to say my life is monotonous, but, but I do have a routine every day. So even if I wake up and I'm like, I'm so tired, I don't want to do anything this morning, being one of those, <laughs> those mornings, I got up and I did yoga because mm -hmm. I knew that that would put me in a better state of mind and on the bad days you know same thing you have to force your force yourself but put yourself in a place where you know that you're going to be in your right mind and you're it's gonna you know switch your day mm -hmm. around release some endorphins get you into a place where you are happy and or happier right. if you will but yeah i still have bad days that physical and mental aspect is huge mm -hmm. it's so connected meditate yeah. every day five minutes mm -hmm. i have a five minute mindful meditation set your intentions yep say what you're grateful for, you know, lots of breath work and stuff like that. Because for me, that works. Mm -hmm. That puts me in a good headspace for the rest of my day. I've set my intentions. I follow through on those. And I'm mindful of those mm -hmm. all day. Being right. patient is one of my right, right. big <laughs> ones because I find myself getting a little on edge mm -hmm. sometimes with people. But I have to remind myself, 
everybody else is going through something today. Absolutely. Right. I'm not the only one that's having a shitty day. You might be having a real shitty day. Mm -hmm. And I'm who am I to not be patient with you or judge you or put you down or say something negative about you? Right. Like, right. Be it's so uplifting. powerful because that's where you're at. Like, <laughs> yeah. if you react to somebody and you're negative, and you're shitty, like you said, that's mm -hmm. about you, not about them. Right. It's all about you. At that or point. if you're like, oh, you're a effer or mm -hmm. you're psycho or whatever, you're talking about yourself. Mm -hmm. That's that's mm -hmm. you. That's yep. your issue, not yep. theirs. Yeah. yeah. It's so powerful it when really you start is. doing that, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. 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 It, the more I learn and the more I do this, like, I think this is more therapy for me than it is for anything. Right. I know people right. watch the show right. and I'm grateful right. and it's super, you yeah. know what I mean? It, it's powerful, right? But like, I get more out of this than I think anybody. You know, be just good. from hearing everybody's stuff and right. like, oh shit, like that's affirmation. This is really how it's supposed yeah. to be, you know, and you can change and right. you can be better right. and you can, you know. And that's the company we keep. That's why, you know, being in a group setting sometimes can be really powerful because it's all about shifting your perspective. Mm -hmm. When we have a shift in perspective, like it helps us, you know, overcome that like victim mindset. Um, what I consider to be a bad day isn't going to be what you consider to be, mm -hmm. be a bad day or what you consider to be a bad day. And it's about, like, what do we term as real for us? Mm -hmm. I can be like, oh, yeah, that's a really bad day. And it immediately puts my day into perspective for me. I'm mm -hmm. just like, wow, like, I'm grateful for what I have going yeah. on. And, you know. It's not and, as bad as, right, yeah. yeah. Right. You know what's really powerful is, is when we, when I walk in here, we, we talked about the peop, the company we keep, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the things I can say is everybody on this floor is mm -hmm. accountable. Right. Like there's not a victim on the floor. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. You know, from Robin to Eric to mm -hmm. you guys to Shelly, mm -hmm. Terry, like everybody here, if you said anything to them, they would have or a problem, right. they would accept responsibility Absolutely. for their part in Instead it. Instead of making excuses. Which is huge yes. because mm -hmm. that eliminates this whole mindset mm -hmm. bullshit that mm -hmm. we deal with. Like, oh my God, they did this to me and they did that right. to me and they did it. Right. That's all, that wouldn't happen. Right. And that that truth, that accountability is super healthy. It is. And it, it, it almost like relaxes me. And well, it's vulnerable. And it's yeah. like it's your nervous system is going, oh, that's a cue for safety. These are safe people. I want to be around these people. Right. No one is blaming anyone I don't feel else. threatened. I yeah. don't feel right. like right. anybody's going to judge right. me. Or it's a very positive environment. And mm -hmm. that's a healthy, like, I don't want to say progressive. You know, you can use the smart mm -hmm. words, right? Like maybe progressive. I don't know, I don't know. Right. I don't know. <laughs> how many times did I like, but, mince my but words But like here. that, that just keeping that company and keeping that process, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And mm -hmm. you can see it in people's eyes. Like people sure. light up. You're like, oh shit, this person is normal. Yeah. Like they're not yeah. a victim, you know? You know, I was, um, the other day we were in group um, at work and I was kind of like doing a, co-teaching thing with another colleague of mine and I ended up sharing a story about a a work environment that I used to be in and the topic of the group was pick four values and out of those values which one would be the first one to go so the way I organized mine I mean like my top one was like spirituality um then I think I don't know if it was like financial stability and then relationships and then work. And it was like, well, which one would be the first one to go? And I said work. Mm -hmm. And then I had to clarify and I, I explained what it meant. And for me, I, my mind just automatically went to this like very toxic work environment that I was in. And as I explained the story, which I won't explain here because it does not have like nice language um and it kind <laughs> of okay. ended in like pseudo violence right um i snapped and i and i reacted in a way that is very uncharacteristic of me and i look up across the room and someone is tearing up and crying and i was like oh my gosh what like was it like that i was it me acting violent and this person was like no i needed to hear that because it's like that toxicity created toxicity within me mm -hmm. and I acted yeah. in a toxic your way of your right yeah. absolutely yeah. and so it was in that moment where I was like oh I need to leave because this is not good it's not a good representation mm -hmm. of me and it is very misaligned with my values um, and it was just a really powerful lesson in that moment to let go of the things that don't feel in alignment with who you are mm -hmm. the other thing is truth right mm -hmm. we I always use this example. I use like road stuff. Shelly gives me shit all the time because like everything relates to driving. <laughs> but 
but the one of the things we talked about a long time ago, and this is another funny thing I always use. I use the same examples all the time. But you know, you're walking through your living room and you stub your toe, and you're like, "Oh, did that hurt? Oh no, I'm fine." You'd be like, "No, that freaking hurt. Yeah. That was gnarly." Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> mm -hmm. And and that truth, you know, to deal with the situation when it happens, mm -hmm. and it's so amazing to me. And I've done it. That's a big piece of you know things that are unhealthy in my life is that you don't deal with the situation. When it happens, you put on like your fantasy glasses right, right. and you make believe that it didn't happen or you mm -hmm. make believe like that wasn't really an issue or you just don't want to deal with it and you just move on so things can be roses and rainbows again. And and that truth, you know, like my toe hurt, things aren't mm -hmm. roses and rainbows. Like, how are you today? Mm -hmm. ah, you know what? Kind of woke up shitty this morning, yeah, like you just yeah, said. Yeah. Or sometimes you wake up and you have to get yourself going, mm -hmm. you know, and do those kinds of things. And, and um, you know, we all have that. Those days, like you just said, you know, we, everybody has those days where you need to like kind of kickstart the motor a little bit and get mm -hmm. your ass going, you mm -hmm. know. Um, and then there's also those days where you don't, you know what right. I mean? Like sometimes you just, I'm just gonna lay in bed and chill. Like I'm gonna just take a day for those me. That's okay days. too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's nothing wrong with that, <laughs> yep. you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that it's that truth, and and it's funny that you said that earlier because because when you guys walked in here, I think everybody on the show, and I'm sure Shelly would agree too, that everybody has sort of a similar mindset mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know we were joking earlier about you know me meeting Eric and and how the, these things happen it happens for a reason like we're right. all we're mm -hmm. supposed to be here this right. isn't random shit Absolutely. right mm -hmm. um, and it's powerful or like Terry you know I see some of her posts on on Facebook like right. literally I met her on Facebook yeah. I was like hey you know you have a son you're with really autism smart, will you like <laughs> I can tell you're smart like I can tell you have your shit together so yeah. you want to come and talk yeah. about it like educate us yeah. on this stuff right yeah. and the powerful thing is that it seems to me, and correct me if I'm wrong again, but it seems to me that a lot of issues relate similarly to how you deal with them mentally. I, like, I, like the, my opinion is like, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Without a question. Cool. I got yeah. one right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I'll mark that shit down. But, but it is, it, it just seems like that the core characteristic, like don't judge, be grateful, mm -hmm. um, you know, appreciative, respectful, don't mm -hmm. be a victim. Mm -hmm. Those mm -hmm. things relate back to you know, we were talking about earlier with Robin about, you know, some judgment and things mm -hmm. like that and identifying things that people let like are less than, like nobody's less than. I have to tell you, like one of the things I'm really passionate about is eradicating stigma around mental mm -hmm. health and substance use. Yeah. And less than 10% of the population seeks out like professional help. Mm -hmm. And I have so much respect and admiration for people who do that because they have knowledge they're given knowledge that they might not necessarily come across otherwise. And these are the people who go out, in my opinion, and like make a difference. We have people who are just like so afraid of being judged and they don't ever seek out anything. And so they stay in that cycle. They yeah. might want to get out of it, but the victim mindset is like perpetuated over and over and over. And it might be uncomfortable to show up yeah. and like walk into a rehab facility or a facility where you're, you know, seeking out case management services or mm -hmm. some kind of um, mental health assistance. Mm -hmm. And we are so afraid of judgment. And I say, just wear it, just own it, you know, right. oh, gosh, just, yeah. just own it. Like, and it I makes you so much more real and genuine. For sure. And, because the people that don't yeah. tell you that they're, mm -hmm. you know, in therapy or yeah. whatever, you don't know. Yeah. And they're great people. Right. But as soon as you, you know, attach that label, mm -hmm. I'm in therapy, automatic. oh my gosh, what's wrong with them? Yeah. Something's got to be really wrong with them. Right. Yeah. Right? Like they'll make funny, they'll be like, oh, like, what do you need me for? You have all those other people around you. You're like, no, I need the whole system. I need the whole support yeah. thing. And But that's a thing too, right? If somebody... If somebody's going out in the world and they're trying to better themselves mm -hmm. in any way, shape, or form, mm -hmm. and someone rips on that or like degrades that or judges mm -hmm. that, well, then that's clearly somebody that needs to fall away. Yep. So you just yeah. keep doing that's what you're doing. That's a them problem. I'd be like, <laughs> hell yeah. Like, yeah. like, go to therapy, man. Right. You know? Um, yeah. Just and it's like therapy is like the best thing ever. Mm -hmm. Well, because it's also like you bounce things off. Like, Shelly's super smart, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll call her up and be like, hey, check this out. Right. What do you think? Right. Right. But I still go to therapy. Mm -hmm. I still have, you know, I still yeah. do EMDR. Yeah. You know, yeah. I do all that stuff because right. I realize like you have to keep exercising those Absolutely. muscles to understand, but then also be able to accept, you know, things like you guys are talking about, mm -hmm. like addiction or, you know, talking with Eric, like he's a smart, smart dude. People mm -hmm. don't realize, you know, when you talk about therapy, I'd like you to explain that philosophy a little bit. Mm -hmm. But when I walked in, and I met you, that was pinnacle. That was amazing. I met you at Pinnacle Recovery, yeah. and I came in to Eric's graduation, mm -hmm. and I was like, holy crap, this is a room full of people yeah. 
that are all telling the truth. Mm -hmm. Nobody's scared. Everybody's supportive. Nobody judged. Safe zone, yeah. It was like super cool. I don't think I've ever experienced anything like that. Really? I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. No. And and what stood out to you? Like what was different besides like besides people telling the truth? Let me reference. So I was in the fire service for Mm -hmm. twenty years, you know, and I worked with SWAT and things like that. And we had critical incident debriefs before. Mm -hmm. And there's a room full of people. The same thing. It doesn't work mm. in that environment. You can do how come? an incident review. Hang on. How come it doesn't work? It doesn't work because you have a room full of people that are judging. Oh. And you also have a room full of people that are vying prideful. for different positions. Mm-hmm. They're prideful. They're prideful yeah. for sure, right? Mm-hmm. Um, they're vying for positions within the organization or the membership, mm-hmm. right? So you might have like a captain over here, a firefighter okay. over here, an engineer over here, a mm. chief. You might have a counselor, a psychiatrist, whatever. And you don't want to be in there crying in front of your peers. You don't want to be in there like really saying how you Why feel. Why not? Where did you, you come up? Weak? Where because, did you come up with that because mindset? Because and you'll be who dictated that to you? That's how but who was. cares? And that's I where yeah. I get really passionate. Mm-hmm. I know. Where I'm just like, who cares? Cry. Just yeah. be like, that sucked. <laughs> that was the worst thing right? I've ever gone through. Yeah. I think there's when people are able to do that they embody vulnerability like, and respect and you know what at the end of the day you feel better because you spoke your truth when people walk in mm-hmm. to a rehab facility they're not they're not gunning for positions they're not gunning for you right. know joe schmoe's um you know i yeah. want this person's you know blessing mm-hmm. it's you're fighting for your life right right so you can either fake that and go through emotions, or you can get really real and really vulnerable and put the work in. And I can't tell you, I you know, how many uh, graduations I've been to where like I end up tearing up. And at first, it's something that I was really, I had a hard time with. I don't like crying in front of people. I have a hard time crying like by myself actually. And in these graduations, it's one of the only places I'm actually able to like tear up and cry and. And initially I was like, why am I crying? What's going on? I'm so happy for people mm-hmm. that they can like go out and like live their best life. Mm-hmm. And it's an honor and a privilege to like have been on that journey with them. And like, so of course I cry now. Yeah. And then it's like, yeah. I make sure I have it. like <laughs> tissues and I embrace it now. Yeah. And I don't care who sees me because hopefully someone else can learn from that. And they're just like, I can be vulnerable mm-hmm. That's too. That's a rule okay. on the show. You know, um, a while ago, like when we first started, you know, I, I teared up and I got upset. Mm-hmm. I've gotten I got upset a bunch of times on yeah. the show. And I'm not scared of it anymore. But like you said, now if I was in that, you know, circle, mm-hmm. I'd be like, that was freaking crazy, man. I'd yeah. fall, I'd do whatever, I'd yeah. say whatever. But I'm in a different place now, mm-hmm. right? Um, and I'm also in a place where that couldn't affect my life right. or my outcome or my income. Right. Right. Um, so that gives you that power, right? And right. I think that's what you're trying Hindsight to explain. Hindsight is 2020, yeah. though. It is. I mean, yeah, you're you always right. look back and you're like, mm-hmm. man, I could have done this. I should have done this. I would have done this. Right. If I could go back and do it differently. But, you know, like you said, we're all where we're supposed to be. Mm-hmm. So right. that circumstance may have happened for you and it's made you better and like more aware. Right. I can, you know, embrace my emotions and be that person. You know right. what I mean? So. Yeah. And now you could like, if you were in that situation today, mm-hmm. having the experiences that you have had, like well that's what the show is right you can like lead by right? example and yeah, model just, it just the other day i mean we know we have followers and stuff but the other day like i said you know a, an old colleague reached out mm-hmm. and he's like man everybody's watching i'm like they are mm-hmm. that's cool yeah really because it because the like we said earlier it's true that the characteristics of mental health apply to so many different things mm-hmm. that it's not about like the fire service or right. being an addict or the police department or military, it's not about that. It's about everybody. All of us, we're all the same, mm-hmm. right? And we let go of that judgment and we let go of that anger and all that bullshit, that victimization mm-hmm. and the drama, like you're mm-hmm. saying. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, I'm actually real. Who are we? Wow. Well, who are Let's we? Let's start asking why. Without like, the trauma and the drama. You're right. Which is why mm-hmm. I go back to what are your values? Are you right. living by your values? Yeah. Right? Um, and you know, one of the things that you guys embody too that's really, really important um, Shelly and I are going to do a segment on the why. Mm -hmm. Because it's not the what. It's Mm -hmm. not the, oh, you're in recovery, or oh, you're this, or Mm -hmm. oh, you're that. And that judgment piece, it's the why. Right? Like, why did this happen? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that part. Why? Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. and that's the difference between, like, hey, don't drink alcohol because it's bad for you. Mm -hmm. Or don't, you know, do whatever. It's about, well, why were you doing it in the first place? Mm -hmm. Like, where does that come from? Mm -hmm. And and what do you do to fix that? that attaches to the drama Mm -hmm. and, Mm -hmm. you know, the trauma from your past. I mean, 
we all have a reason for doing it. But some people, it's a little bit more severe, like something happened to them in their childhood and it set a tone for their life. And, it, it you know, that hurts me because mm. I had a good childhood. I had a good life. I mean, there was nothing yeah. wrong with my, my home life. It was just something within me that I felt that if I didn't have this, I wasn't cool. Mm. And mm. then something switched and it's like, I need this in order to survive because I can't yeah. live without, I literally can't live mm. without it. <laughs> when, when did you decide like you didn't have to go out and party and drink to be cool? What, when did that change? When I almost died. <laughs> <laughs> like that was it? That was it, yeah. I was, I mean, I probably the whole month of October, I was just a back and forth because I was so violently ill from the alcohol but I was constantly going to it because it was the only thing that was making me mm -hmm. feel better. Mm -hmm. It's like, I mean, we've seen, you know, heroin addicts where they get ill and they go out and get their next fix because mm -hmm. that's the only thing that makes them feel better and they don't want to be in that sickness. Same thing with alcohol. Right. I mean, there's a spectrum. I mean, if you drink every day, you're an alcoholic. It's just where do you fall on that spectrum? I was all the way over here dependent on it. Whereas people who have a glass of wine every day, they're on this end of the scale. Because, But you're still an alcoholic regardless, mm -hmm. you know. But it's just where you fall on that scale. And I was all the way over here, which made me be like, I don't want to be there. And I know that I can't be anywhere else in between because I'm constantly chasing that, mm -hmm. that high, that, mm -hmm. that great feeling that it gives me. So the more alcohol I intake, the more dependent I am on it, the higher my tolerance is. I was hospitalized mm -hmm. with a 0.35 alcohol Jesus. level and I was functioning I was having conversations I was totally normal that's not healthy yeah. <laughs> you should be dead at you that point yeah. yeah you know so. I noticed too when you say alcoholic like by definition I would be an alcoholic as well right like for a super long time I drank every single day mm -hmm. and then you know you do that sabbatical and I come back and I'm like okay like what's important to mm -hmm. me like what's really important to me and you start making those changes mm -hmm. incrementally of yeah. course and I stopped drinking for a while. Mm -hmm. And then I was at the lake and I had a shot and I was like, somebody roofied me. <laughs> it was freaking gnarly. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's it's weird how it impacts you right. so mm -hmm. massively mm -hmm. because you lose that tolerance. Right. Yep. You know? And then you, you you just it's just so I don't even know how to explain it, but you're like, shit, now I gotta start over. No. You know, it's you should never weird. be down on yourself for that. I mean, I have no judgment. I'm I'm I work in the industry, the bar industry. I serve people alcohol every single day. I have no judgment on you because you're not me. Right. You can have your one drink every now and again and be totally fine, whereas I cannot. So right. who am I to place any judgment on you and how you live your life? Right. Because you're not me. Right. Nobody's me. I have my own story. I have, you know, obviously not a lot of people go to a hospital and almost die and then come out of it with, that's my story. You can be hey, I want to take a break for 30 days and go rediscover myself and then have that one shot and be like, wow, that was fun, but not that fun. No. Not roofy. But yeah. Yeah, I swear to God, I was like, holy shit. Like somebody fucking roofied me. Yeah, but everybody's different. My self-talk you know? wasn't good. I, then I fell asleep on my couch. So. <laughs> leave it off. Leave it off. What, um, how do you feel now? I was going to make a comment earlier. Like you're all shiny. Oh, like no, I mean that seriously. <laughs> like your eyes are super, like the whites, of your eyes are super white. Like your eyes are really like glassy and bright. Your skin is healthy. Like you're, you look like you exude health. I, I feel like I do. I think at this point in my life, I'm the healthiest that I've ever been. And because of alcohol or because of everything? I think everything. Getting my mind right. I think that's where it starts. You have to be mentally healthy. And that's the and then it sobriety. Kind of just yeah, it kinda just goes everywhere else. So then not only I mean, my first probably year of sobriety, I was working out every now and again, but I was like, Oh, this feels good. I think I'm gonna dabble in it a little bit. But I was working up here first because and I'm again, I'm still a work in progress. There's no, you know, end line for mental growth I feel like at mm -hmm. least for me but I I feel like I've just I've moved from mental health to physical health and now it's just like a conjoined thing and you're just I feel great it's about like myself so it exudes in my shiny skin apparently and my <laughs> it's white <powerful>. eyes <laughs> well no it's something that you notice right mm -hmm. like you notice that like you get your color back and you yeah. get your yeah like your eyes yeah. are whiter you know yeah. what I'm saying mm -hmm. like I can tell when I drink like I get wrinklier 
<laughs> you know what I mean? And my eyes like kind of look weird and you know what I'm saying? Like I can tell. I'll be like, yeah, after, should I drink too much yeah. last night? Uh-huh, when I was uh-huh. drinking a lot. Right. You know? Right. You look ill. <laughs> kind of. And I mean, you feel like shit. Like, alcohol you know. is poison at the end of the day. Essentially. So. Yeah. And you sweat more. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. <laughs> Super weird. Just uncomfortable. Nobody likes it. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, I think that was a really good segment. Um, I have some ideas. We'll, we'll take a break now and then I have some ideas. I want to, you know, get Shelly and... Yeah. Because we got to get the smart people going, you know what I mean? So, um, everybody, thanks for watching The Knot. This is, uh, this is um, Sarah and <laughs> Tiffany, our psychotherapist. Yes. You're going to be on staff now, by the way. We might keep you around. This is pretty cool. Yeah. That's, I'm, yeah. Okay, This cool. is powerful. I cool. learned a lot. Cool. Um, but anyways, we appreciate everybody watching and supporting the show. Scott Framler with The Mental Health. Have a great day.